Hello friends, this video on tissues part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the next question is, are all tissues similar? That means whether it is um, an animal tissue or it is a plant tissue. So are they all look similar? Do they all look sim exactly similar? So let us have a look at that. Well, not exactly. Now let us try to remember the plant cell and the animal cell, which we have discussed in our previous lesson, right? So we have had a good in-depth discussion on plant cell and animal cell. So do you think that the plant cell and the animal cell looked exactly similar? Let us have quickly, let us look at these two pictures of plant cell and animal cell so that you can remember or you can recall whatever you have studied in the previous lesson. So there are very differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. For example, in a plant cell you had vacuoles, right, which had an important role to play. They give rigidity to the plant cell. Whereas in case of animal cells, vacuoles did not have much role to play. Correct. Similarly, in case of a plant cell, you had an additional cell wall, which was missing in case of an animal cell. So there were many such differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. Correct. So that means the plant cell and the animal cell were not exactly similar. Now, these cells only again group together to form tissues. So now do you think that the plant tissues and the animal tissues would be exactly similar? No, because the component which is making up the plant tissue and the animal tissue, they are not similar. So therefore, the plant tissues and the animal tissues will also not be similar. And also another thing is that tissues are assigned some specific functions. So now the functions are also in accordance with the lifestyle and food habit of that organism, whether it is plant or animal, correct? As I mentioned before that the cells, so the one thing is that since the plant cell and the animal cell were not exactly similar, therefore the plant tissues and the animal tissues are also not exactly similar. The second thing is that since plants and animals both are two different kind of organisms which have different kind of lifestyle, different kind of food habit. So therefore the kind of function they want the tissue to perform that is also different. Correct? So that is why the tissues are again different because structurally they are different because the cells are different. Functionally they are different because the two types of organisms are leading to different kind of lives. For example, if you look at an animal, now everywhere I'm taking the picture of a human being because that is most easy to understand for you. So if you consider any other animal, you will see that the animals move from one place to another, right? Whereas if you look at the plants, they are always static, they are always fixed at one place. Right? So, similarly, there are many such differences between a plant, the way an animal prepares his food and the way by which a plant prepares its food. It is quite different, right? So, the lifestyle of a plant and an animal is very different and that is why functionally also the tissues are quite different. So, let us look at the major differences between a plant tissue and animal tissues. Now, again, so here we are actually broadly classifying the tissues into these two categories, plant tissues and animal tissues. So, then we will first here look at the differences between a plant tissue and an animal tissue. Then we will discuss in detail about plant tissues and then we will go into animal tissues, right? Okay, so let us look at the differences between plant tissues and animal tissues. The first difference, when we talk of plant tissues, mostly they are dead supportive tissues to provide mechanical strength. Okay, so mostly the plant tissues are supportive in function. So that means they support the plant because if you see the Plants are always static at a place, as I just mentioned. They do not move from one place to another. Have you ever seen them moving from one place to another? I'm sure you have not, right? So, so it is fine for the plants if their tissues are dead. But they want these tissues to support them. Because you would have seen that when the plants grow, 
So they bear so many branches, they bear so many leaves, they bear fruits or flowers. So, so the responsibility of the plant keeps increasing. So it needs a lot of support to hold it, right? So the plants are okay with having dead tissues, but they need tissues to support, to provide it mechanical strength. Correct? But whereas in case of animals, mostly it has living tissues. Why? Because the animals keep moving from one place to another for different activities in search of food, in order to work. So in order to live, the animals keep moving. And for locomotion, they need a lot of more energy. Like for example, you would have seen that when you fall ill, you don't have much energy. You don't feel like moving from one place to another. You just feel like lying down on your bed, right? So what does that mean? That means that if you want to move from one place to another, you need more energy. Now, if you need more energy, the tissues which constitute you must be living because if the tissues are living, the tissues can provide you energy. Right? Because the tissues are made of cells again and the cells are again living. So if they are living cells, the cells have everything in place. It has the nucleus, it has the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is generating energy and you are getting energy. Right? So now you can relate things, right? How cells provide energy and how that energy is utilized by you when you move from one place to another. So since animals are moving from one place to another, mostly they have living tissues, whereas in case of plants, they need a lot of support and that is why they have dead tissues which act as supportive tissues to provide mechanical strength. Secondly, when we think of plants, the growth is limited to specific regions. So dividing tissues are localized in those regions. Now, when you look at a plant body, it doesn't grow uniformly from everywhere. So, if, if, you, if you look at a plant at your house, <coughs> what do you see? If you look at this picture also, you have planted a small plant like this. Now, you keep giving it water, you let it get proper sunlight, what happens? The plant grows and becomes something like this. Again, the plant grows and it becomes something like this. So if you see, the most of its growth, the maximum growth is shown by the shoot and the root, right? The root which is growing inside. So this root is growing fast and the shoot is going fast. So the length is growing fast. But if you look at the growth which is shown by the flowers or the leaves or the fruits, it is comparatively lesser. The size of the leaves, leaves and all, it grows. It grows to a certain length and then the growth stops. Similarly, the flowers, the flower, you get a flower, there is a bud, the bud grows into a flower. After that, it, it is not that the flower keeps growing, growing, growing and growing. right? But when you look at the shoot or the root, it keeps growing, growing and growing. Right? So that means there are certain regions in the plant where the growth is maximum, where the growth is more. So that is why it is said that the growth is limited to specific region in a plant. So those regions where the growth is more, those regions are known as the dividing region of a plant. Whereas the region where the growth is not that prominent, they are known as the non-dividing region of a plant. Right? So in case of plant, the growth is not uniform in all regions. It is specific to regions. Therefore, in case of plants, the dividing tissues, that means the tissues which have the capability to divide, because only if the tissues divide, the plants can grow. Right? In our previous lesson, we saw that how actually cells grow by cell division. When cells divide, so one cell forms two cells, those two cells will again form four cells, those four cells will again form eight cells. So, I mean, that is how the number of the cells will increase and that is how growth will actually take place. So, the dividing tissues in case of plants, the dividing tissues are localized in those dividing regions. Because wherever the uh, growth is more, there you will have more dividing tissues. Whereas in case of animals, growth is almost uniform throughout. So if you look at a small child who is born, or if you look at a four-year-old kid, and if you look at an adult human being, what do you see? 
everything has increased in size it is not that only the height of the person has increased and his fingers and his hands are still remaining the same it is not like that right so everything has grown uniformly whether it is your face whether it is your fingers whether it is your height whether it is your weight so everything has increased uniformly so the growth is almost uniform everywhere and that is why you have dividing tissues uniformly distributed accordingly right so the, here we saw that how plant tissues and animal tissues are structurally di different because of because of the fact that plants are static and animals are moving again how they are functionally different because the growth is limited in to certain region in plant whereas in case of animals it is almost uniform throughout right so with this we saw that how plant tissues and animal tissues are quite different from each other Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.